In this video, I'm gonna hypnotize you through the screen to quit your bad habit or addiction. Whether you wanna stop smoking, stop vaping, quit overeating to help you lose weight, stop biting your nails, stop self-sabotaging, whatever change you need to make in your life, whatever you need to overcome, this video is going to help you do just that. And if you've never seen one of my hypnosis through the screen videos before, I definitely recommend checking out another video first to give you an idea of what this is gonna be like, because again, this video is going to be targeted to making that specific change. Now, if you want to make sure you get the most out of this video, I would encourage you to wear headphones, make sure you're in a place, a quiet place, you won't be able to be distracted, that you can commit to the full duration and length of this video to really make sure you get the most out of it. So make sure you go somewhere where you can do that. Get your headphones if you have them, if you want them. Make sure you lay down, sit down, put yourself in a situation, a spot where you can focus on me and on this video, and let's jump right into it. If you're ready to get hypnotized, last thing that I'll say too is know that hypnosis is not mind control. The things that I say in this video are not just gonna magically happen. As much as I wish I could just snap my fingers and make your addiction go away, it doesn't work like that. The thing is that I can't make you change anything, but what I can do is help you help you make that change. I can't change you, but I can help empower you to make that change, and that's what I'm gonna do through this video, through hypnotizing you through the screen. So if you're ready to make that happen, lay back, sit back, and let's do this thing. So as you listen to the sound of my voice, as you focus on this video, allow yourself to take a deep breath in, let it out, focusing on me, doing great. Allow yourself to take another gentle breath in, and let it out, and that's right. And for a third time, take a deep breath in, and breathe out and close your eyes now as you focus on the sound of my voice. With your eyes closed, that just means there's one less thing for you to worry about or look at, concentrate on. All you have to concentrate or focus on is the sound of my voice. Letting yourself relax, letting yourself focus, letting yourself go deeper into this amazing state of relaxation and focus. Relax every muscle, every nerve, every fiber. From the tip of your head down to the bottom of your toes, just let yourself relax. That's right. That's right. Imagine right now as I count down from five to one, imagine you're standing at the top of a staircase in your mind and each number I count down you take a step down that staircase, telling yourself how much deeper you're relaxing, how much further you're going into this amazing relaxed state. Starting with the number five. That's right, even deeper, even further. Take another step into the number four. The more you hear my voice, the more you focus. The more you focus, the more you hear my voice. And the more you hear my voice, the more you relax. The more you relax, the more you hear my voice. The more you hear my voice, the more you relax. And the more you focus, the more you hear my voice as you go into three. Another number, another step down that staircase, even deeper, even further, every muscle, nerve, fiber, focusing on me. As you go into that next number, as you relax even deeper and further, all the way down this amazing state of relaxation. In fact, take all of this wonderful relaxation you're giving yourself now, and I want you just to double that relaxation now, relaxing even deeper and further. Focusing on me as you get ready to relax the deepest and furthest you relax this entire time at the final number one now. That's right. So relax, so focus, tuning out any other noises, any other distractions. And you know you're not actually asleep. But when I say the word sleep, it just helps you relax deeper and further. Sleep doesn't mean you go to sleep. Sleep just means you relax more. Sleep means you focus on me more. Sleep means you're less distracted. Sleep means you focus on me even further. Sleep means you relax. And let yourself just sleep, focus on the sound of my voice. That's right. And don't actually fall asleep. If you were actually asleep, you wouldn't be able to hear me, but let yourself get as relaxed as you were if you were asleep letting yourself become completely immersed in this experience and on my voice, because my voice is what is going to help you overcome this addiction, this habit, this thing that's holding you back. The more you let yourself focus, the more you'll be able to get the most out of this video, out of this experience. As you continue to relax, continue to focus, I want you to relax just a sensation, just a feeling in your eyelids. Let your eyelids get so relaxed they feel heavy. Let them feel heavy, they feel stuck. Let those eyes become so heavy and stuck that they feel like you cannot open them. In fact, let them become so heavy and stuck you feel like you can't open them. In fact, go ahead and try and notice. If you try to open your eyes, you find they are stuck and you cannot open them and they will not open and you can stop trying to open those eyes. You can just let yourself relax even further and sleep even deeper, even further. Relax, focus on my voice. Whether your eyes opened or closed, it didn't matter. 
whatever happened, either way, it means the same thing. It means you can let yourself focus on my voice even further, even deeper. You can sleep and relax even more. Focus on the sound of my voice. That's right. And as you listen to my voice, you relax more. As you relax more, you listen to my voice. And as you listen to my voice and you feel relaxed, you feel good, I simply want to tell you a story. A story of a similar person just like you who had this habit they needed to get rid of, an addiction, if you will, this, this thing they needed to overcome and they just could not. They tried everything and they tried all these different techniques or methods or therapies and nothing seemed to work and they just resign themselves to the fact that they could not change. They could not quit. Until one day, this person was at home sitting at their kitchen table when their small little child comes bursting into the room. Bursting into the room, crying her eyes out. And she looks up at this person and goes, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to die. And of course, this person tries to, to console their little girl and says, oh, honey, don't worry. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to go anywhere. Why would you say that? And the little girl is distraught and, and she looks looks up at her parent and goes, I don't want you to die. I heard you on the phone with, with the doctor and they said that addiction, that thing is going to kill you and I love you. I don't want you to die. And, and they try to console their daughter even further and they say, hey, don't worry. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm fine. I'm not going to die until you go, grow old. Everything is going to be fine. And yet, the little girl, still distraught, and looks up into her parents' eyes. The next thing that she says breaks their heart. Because she looks up at that person who raised her. And she says, you can't die because I want you to be there when I get married. And at that moment, that person suddenly quit. From that moment on, they never indulged in their addiction or habit again because they didn't really care how their decision was affecting them or the pain it was causing them in their life, but you know that they cared about their little girl. And as soon as they realized that their decision was causing pain to the person they loved the most, they resolved within themselves that they would change right here, right now, that this was their moment, that they had to make a decision. And all it took was that decision. Because all change, it's not a matter of ability. It wasn't that they couldn't change. It's that they didn't. They didn't have enough of a reason until their daughter gave them that reason and they became free. You see, this thing that you're overcoming has nothing to do with your ability to overcome it. It has everything to do with the reason. The reason you haven't done it yet. And think about this. If you knew that the next time you gave into your addiction, the next time you gave into your habit, person you love the most would die. Would you choose to indulge in that habit again? No. You would find a way, you would make a way to make sure you never did it again so that the person you cared about would live. And yet, if in that hypothetical it would be that easy, why can't it be that easy without that hypothetical? You see, through this process, through this next visualization we're about to do, I'm gonna help you find that reason, find that motivation, find that drive. Because an addiction is not addicting because you can't overcome it. The addiction is simply addicting because you haven't decided to. And some part of your brain doesn't think that it's that simple. It likes to overcomplicate it. But in reality, it's far more simple than you realize. This big thing we like to complicate as an addiction or a bad habit or something we can't quit. All it is is a decision. All it takes is a choice. A choice you have to make. And as you think about what it would take to make that choice, I want you to imagine the room you're in suddenly starts to fade away. 
And even though your eyes are closed and you're focused on my voice, imagine the room fades away, the walls, the furniture, where you're sitting or lying, it all just fades away. And imagine you now suddenly find yourself in what looks like an elevator. It's a small little box, a small little room, it looks like an elevator, but this is no elevator. This is in fact a time machine. And in a moment, the time machine is going to take you to a few different instances in time. And the first I want you to think of is a happy memory, a happy moment, something in your life that was really pleasant, a really fun memory that brings you joy that happened before your addiction or your habit started. Think about that time. Think about the people you were with, how much fun that moment was, how much joy that thing brought you. And as you think about that memory, you notice the walls start to fade again. And you suddenly find yourself in that moment from however long ago this memory was. But you're in that moment almost as if you were a ghost. You can see and hear the people around you, but the people around you can't see or hear you. But you can see yourself and how much fun you're having in this moment. You can see the joy all over your face. You can see the laughter, the smiles, how much fun people around you are having. And you notice how alive you feel. And some part of you starts to wonder as you notice this amazing memory how many more of these memories could you have had if you didn't give in to this addiction? How many moments like these have you robbed yourself from by choosing to start this bad habit? By choosing to not quit? By choosing to stay stuck? By not making a decision that could change your life? By choosing to let this addiction control you instead of controlling it? How much more of these moments could your life have had? And now, well, your addiction may not seem like that big of a deal to you, it has bigger of an impact than you realize. Even little subconscious impact. If you may think, oh, just this little thing that I do wouldn't stop me from having moments like these, but the subtle subconscious sabotage that this thing has done to you is beyond your recognition. It is subconscious. And yet, dozens of moments like these, you've robbed yourself of. And you'll continue to rob yourself of if you continue to indulge in this habit, in this addiction, in this thing that's controlled your life up until now. Think of how happy you were. Notice the smiles, notice the joy. Notice what was and Think about what could be. Think about moments like these that could dictate your future, could become your future. If only you had the strength. And maybe you even do. But if only you could live with more moments like these. As this moment around you fades away and you find yourself back in the elevator room, back in the time machine, and back thinking about what can be, about what was, about what is. And as you think about those things, I want you to think of somebody close to you, somebody you care about, somebody either close to your age or somebody younger than you, someone who may even look up to you. It could be a sibling, could be a child, it could be a friend, a family member, someone you care about quite deeply. And I want you to think of this person, and as you think of this person, I want you to imagine the walls around you fade away yet again. And imagine you are suddenly in this person's home. And you see this person sitting at the end of the room by themselves, their back is to you. And you wonder what they're doing, what they're up to. It brings you a certain amount of joy or pleasantness, happiness to, to see them because you care about this person quite a bit. And again, like a ghost, you can see and hear them, but they can't see or hear you. And out of curiosity, you walk over to them to see what they're doing, to see what they're up to. But you notice that they too are indulging in your addiction. This habit that you thought was just yours 
has rubbed off on them. Because little did you know that they looked up to you and they still do. And they see you as a role model. And yet your decision, your choice, it's not a good one. And yet they still imitated it. They still thought it was a good idea. And here they are just as stuck as you. Your decision to not quit, your decision to continue to stay stuck, has caused them to experience the same level of stuckness. And notice just the sadness on their face as they continue to indulge in this addiction in front of you and you wish you could yell out to them to stop, that it's not worth it, that, that, that don't do it, to quit, to change that they don't have to continue this. And yet they do, because they see you doing the same. And you don't realize how much of an impact you have on their life. You don't realize how much they look up to you, how much they imitate you. And seeing the choices you've made have inspired the choices they've made. And you start to wonder that just maybe if you were to make a choice, if you were to make a decision, and then just maybe and hopefully they would model that choice as well. And that if you were to end this pain that this decision has caused in your life, you would not only be doing it for you, but you'd be doing it for them. You'd be doing it for this person you loved, that you may not even have known the impact your decision has had on them, but it certainly has. And know that they care a lot about you and the decisions you are continuing to make continue to cause pain to not only them, but to the other people close to you, the other people you care about. You have no idea the amount of suffering and pain your decision continues to bring them. Again, even if it's subtle, even if you may realize, oh, it's not that bad, just this little thing that I do to myself, how does it affect them? It affects them in far more ways than you know. This thing that robs your happiness, this thing that robs your joy, they don't get to experience you the same way that, that they should, that you would want them to. And it causes them to suffer. And even if you may not want to do it for yourself, do it for them. Do it for the person who loves you, the people who love you. Don't let them continue to suffer because of a decision you still refuse to make. Now is the time, now is the moment. Don't let another day go by where your decisions continue to hurt those around you. It's time to make that change. And as the walls fade away, once again, you find yourself once again, back in this elevator room, back in this time machine, thinking about the impact that your decisions have made. Impacts that are far greater than you've realized. Impacts that have spread to the people around you. That you are a beacon, whether you realize it or not. And when you feel joy, when you experience joy, it spreads to those around you. When you feel suffering, it spreads to those around you. When you feel stuck, when you feel addicted, when you feel helpless, that too spreads to those around you. So do it for them. Change for them. Stop sharing your pain with the people around you. It's time to break free. But not until the walls fade around you and you experience one final scene. And this time you notice yourself outside, surrounded by a whole bunch of your friends and family, people you care about, your loved ones. You notice they're all outside, dressed very nicely, gathered around looking at something, but none of them look all that happy. And you wonder why there's just a sadness spread across their faces. And you realize that as all these people you love and care about, 
a sad look on their face, all dressed in black. As you look to where they're looking and you notice them all looking down at a casket. And you realize you're at a funeral. And this is your funeral. And this is years in the future. A terrible accident has happened and your life ended much shorter than you thought it would, than you hoped it would. And yet in this future, in this reality, you never overcame your addiction. It plagued you until your dying days. It continued to haunt you. It continued to spread pain, to spread suffering to yourself, to your life and those that you loved. And you notice, you can see it written on the faces of your loved ones, that as much as they wish they could, they could smile and laugh about all the the fun moments and the joy that you spread, all they can help but think about is how this addiction took you to the grave with it. That it never let you go. Or rather, you never let it go. That it sucked the life out of you, it sucked the happiness out of you. Until one day, there was no more life for it to take. And the reality of this reality is that it all could have been different. It all could have been different. Had you made a simple decision, had you made a simple choice, had you just decided that this thing no longer would control you, but you didn't, but you didn't. And it continued to hurt you and the ones you cared about until the day that you died. Rather than your life being marked by love, by legacy, by joy, by fulfillment, by making the most of your time on earth, it was marked by struggle, struggling, by suffering, by pain. you really want this addiction, this habit to be the thing that defines you? To be the thing that people will remember most about you when your time is up? Because it will. You don't stop. It will. And think about as you just look down at the casket that you know your future self is sitting in and you wish that you could do it over. You wish you could go back and tell yourself to stop, to tell yourself to change, to tell yourself that it's not worth it to continue, to tell yourself that there's so much more that you don't, it doesn't have to be this way. That if only you could do it again, if only you had a second chance. And as the scene fades away, you find yourself back in this elevator box in this time machine, you realize that you do. You do have a second chance because that future will not be your future unless you let it. You see, your past will not become your future unless you give it permission to be. And although you can't go back and make a new yesterday, you can make a decision today that will make a new tomorrow. This is your second chance. This is your awakening. This is your realization that a decision must be made. It is time. It is time. It is now the time for you to change, for you to make a decision. And you know what has to be done. And you see, this is only as far as I can go on this journey with you. I can only take you up to this far, but now it's your time. It's your responsibility. There's a decision you know must be made. Maybe that decision is simply just to say enough is enough and I'm done. I quit, no more. My life is far too valuable. The people in my life are far too precious 
for me to continue to let this thing control me. Maybe your decision is to tell somebody. Maybe your decision is to find somebody to be accountable with. Maybe it's to sign up for a rehab or a recovery program. Maybe it's to eliminate these things in your life. If you're trying to lose weight, then get rid of the foods that are causing you to overeat. If you're trying to quit smoking, get rid of the cigarettes, get rid of the vape, get rid of the devices that continue to allow you to indulge in this habit. There's decisions you know you must make. And now is when you know you must make them. This is your chance. This is your moment. All change is not a matter of ability. It is a matter of motivation. It is a matter of reason. What is your reason? Who will you do it for? If not for yourself, do it for your future self. And if not for your future self, do it for those you care about, for those you love. Because today can be your day. Today is your day. Today is the day that you decide that enough is enough. No more will you be defined by this addiction. Today is the day that this addiction no longer controls you, but today is the day that you have taken control over it. You have taken control over your addiction, over your habit. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And no more. You're done. And it's done. Hurting you, haunting you, stopping you, holding you back from the person that you want to be. You now have the power, have the ability, have the capability to change. And you always have, but you may not have realized it up until now, that you can change and you will change because you must change. You must. You must. You must change. And you will. And you have. And you have. You have. As the walls of this time machine, this elevator room, they fade away, you find yourself back in your room, back where you are, in the present moment, finding yourself being faced with the decision, faced with the realization of what's possible, of what you can do, and what you will do, of what you might have already done. Because now is the best time. And when would now be the best time to make that decision, make that choice? Because again, there's only so much that I can do for you, but the most that I can do for you is helping you do for you what must be done for you. But only you can make the change. Only you can make the choice. Only you can make the decision to quit, to overcome. And in a moment, I'm going to count up from 1 to 10. Each number I count up from 1 to 10, feeling not only less relaxed and less hypnotized, but feeling more confident and more sure in your ability to make this change, feeling more motivated. And when I reach the number 10, not only will you no longer be in the state of hypnosis, but you will be the most confident you've ever been to go make this decision, to make this choice, to do what must be done. Again, maybe it's just making a choice. Maybe it's making a decision. Maybe it's taking a step. Oftentimes, the best decisions are the ones followed by action. Do what you need to do. Only you know what you need to do, but do it. One, this change that must be made for you and those around you to make your life even better, even more amazing through this decision. Three, no longer letting it hold you back. Four, no longer letting it define you. Five, feeling full of energy, full of confidence, full of life, less relaxed, less hypnotized as you continue to focus into six, feeling more alive, more confident, more capable than ever, knowing you can make this change, knowing the ability to make this change is within you and it always has been. Seven, feeling amazing, confident, 
motivated. You can do this. Nine, today is the day. Enough is enough. The decision must be made and it has been made now at the final number 10. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling amazing and incredible in every single way. And I hope this experience was helpful for you. I hope this experience was empowering for you. And different people will watch this video and have different results. For some of you, you may watch this video and after one time watching it, listening, experiencing this visualization, this hypnosis, that's all it takes. For some of you, it may be helpful to watch this multiple times to really let this idea sink in. But at the end of the day, remember that my power is not really the power of anything I can do to you. My power is me helping you untap your power. Acknowledge your power. Acknowledge the thing that's always been inside of you. My power is simply helping you unleash your own. So through this experience, I hope it was able to do just that. And I hope this truly helped you out. Because that's my goal in making videos like these, is that people will truly be affected and lives will be changed by it even watching a simple video like this. So I hope you enjoyed this experience. I hope you got a lot out of it. And until the next Hypnosis Through the Screen videos, video, wherever, whatever I film next, we'll see you in the next one.